I thought I heard the door open. Why don't we just get started? And uh, seeing that it's uh, 7.03, I'm just going to call our meeting to order. And welcome to the uh, Town of Situate Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 5th, 2011. Um, and uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order and have an acceptance of the agenda. So move, move moved, to moved by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Mr. Norton. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Moving on to the next item, which is the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins? Seeing none, we're moving right along to the next agenda item, which is meet the applicants for the Conservation Commission. And our first applicant is um, Maureen Carlberg. Ms. Carlberg, good evening. Come on up, if you don't mind, and welcome. Uh, you're looking to uh, become part of the Conservation Commission, and I know that you've submitted uh, some documentation. Uh, um, just briefly, you would like to just explain why you're interested to the public and why the Conservation Commission as opposed to any other commission or committee? Okay. Well, um, I, ca I came from a very civic background, a small town like situate in, in, in uh, New Jersey. And I, our family was always involved with town development, conservation, recreation, and um, a lot of various things. My father actually got an award from New York, New, uh, New, New Jersey State for his involvement over 50 years. So with that background, um, we were always involved with our town. And since I moved to Massachusetts 30 years ago, um, I've lived in the South Shore, and I've, for the most part, been a single parent and never had the time to give back. So my interest is to give back to a town and to where I love. I love Situate. Um, with, and I think I have a lot to offer with my experience. It's diverse. My interests are um, in that I love, I love the environment here. The people are great. And um, I also realize that there's a lot of economic challenges. And um, conservation also needs to be part of the, the piece that's got to be um, looked after. So I'm interested in preserving, you know, situate as a town and, and, and its uniqueness and, and all the wonderful things it has to offer as well as, um, you know, to serve. Um, my experience in is, has involved everything from, you know, being a parent and being involved with baseball and all the recreational and open space, the issues with open space and not having any. You know, I lived in, in, Cohat in um, Quincy for four years, Randolph for 10, Braintree for 10, and I've been in Situate for almost four. I own two residents in Situate, one's an investment property. Um, I understand, you know, when you lived in, in Wollaston Beach, you had no place to go swimming. Um, you know, Randolph was very similar. They had an indoor pool, which was closed half the year. So all these amenities and things, I want to be sure that as a person who plans to retire in Situate, <laughs> that it keeps its integrity. Um, my business background has been a lot of accounting, financial management, consulting, uh, financial planning. Um, I've worked for individuals as well as corporations. I've worked for over 100 companies. And everything from um, HR plans and contract negotiations from bidding jobs. Um, I've had to get variances on my own before for in that I've owned property. I've owned um, three, uh, two three-family houses. One of them I converted into condos. So I've done a lot of legal work um, with lawyers. I've done a lot of accounting with CPAs. And uh, my background is diverse. And I'm very familiar with um, getting through red tape, digging down to, the, to contracts, diving, and also being, being just working through the system to get things accomplished. So I think I have a good, um, I've also worked for, you know, been involved with, <laughs> I worked for um, University of Vermont in the forestry department and, and been involved in, you know, hikes and walks and whatever the things that we do um, to be, you know, involved with our environment. Good. Yeah. Mr. Norton? It, uh, Murray, thank you, and thank you for applying. Uh, one of the important things I think we're looking for, uh, you know, we have a, 
a conservation agent on a limited time now, so is, is someone who would be available uh, to go out in the field during the day to either assist him or to go out on their own to, lo to look at particular <coughs> situations? How is your availability? It's, it's very flexible. Is it? Um, through the last 30 years, I've been a consultant as well as full-time mm -hmm. employees, and um, just recently I've switched back to the full consultant again, which means I have full flexibility. Um, right now I have a commitment of one day a week, and the rest is, you know, whenever I want. So most of my clients, I do a lot out of my house, and, you know, I do all my chores during the day, <laughs> you know, not on weekends. And so I, I do have the availability. Thank you. Um, Mary? Um, continuing on with Mr. Norton's comments, uh, the other thing is is the Conservation Commission is probably one of the hardest working commissions we have in town because they meet every other week. And uh, those meetings can be long. Uh, they're at night. They r often run from 6.15 to 9, 10 o'clock at night, and again every other week. Um, so do you travel a lot as well as part of your day yeah. job or anything like that? I'm Massachusetts-based. I, I don't do anything out of Boston. Yeah, okay. I have... <laughs> I go to the North Shore about once a week, and that's about it. Wow, okay. But, um, that's you know, my, my that's goal, about 52 I've, times more than I go per year. <laughs> I lived in the city for the last 30 years. I lived, you know, and my goal, and I've been commuting for the last two years to Northeastern in, in um, Back Bay, and I, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, sure. Now, I'm going to try to get things going here. Have before. you talked to any members of the current Conservation Commission or the current agent or the former agent or the I've um, I've spoken other at length members? Frank, Snick, Frank Snow. Yeah, uh, okay. And he's, you know, and he felt it was a good fit. He felt that, um, that I have a lot to offer, um, yep. especially that I like to get, I'm, I'm a detailed person, you know, getting down to the, um, the nitty-gritty and just do what we need to do. Would you be adverse, not saying that, sure. um, I mean, with your credentials and qualifications, if, if not the conservation, would you be open to other committee assignments? Sure. I only ask that because you certainly could benefit, or you could help the town benefit in for other areas. And I'm not trying to say you shouldn't be on conservation. It's, a, it's certainly a very important committee, but I, I'm looking at your credentials saying, wow, like see other areas where you could really help the town. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, there's a number of them that I was interested in. Even that economic committee that you were looking for for members, and as well as the preservation committee. The, I mean, we're coming there's, up. There's our assignments lot. are yeah. coming up um, at the end of May. Uh, that's when things turn over. So it, that's why mm -hmm. sometimes people come to our um, put their hat in the proverbial ring, and they don't get it. And they get disappointed, but I'm like, I wish they wouldn't, because sometimes they're like, you really could do not you, but other those people could be great on other committees or other boards, um, and so at least to know that you're not, I'm not, I'm not boxed willing. in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do have a special interest of, with the conservation here mm -hmm. in Situate. Um, I think it's, we're, I think the town is going through some really important decisions, um, especially you know with the fiscal constraints. Yeah. You know the wind power, the the tr the towers. I mean, there's just a lot of things that that are in the works, and so that's one of the reasons why I pinpointed this particular area. John, I was just oh sorry, can I, one more question. Yeah. If I could. Have you done grant writing in some of your jobs before, or any of that sort of stuff? I have not written them, but I but I I have clients that have them, so I have to understand them to be yeah. able to do the yeah. accounting for them. Yeah. But um, I have not specifically written one. No. Okay. And just to follow up on Mr. Danahy's comments as well, you know, we're only going to be able to appoint one of you two tonight, and I haven't met the other gentleman yet. It might be you, I guess. But, uh, you know, you both seem very well qualified, and, sure. and both you guys, John will say the same thing to you as you. We, we, we don't like is when we don't appoint somebody, they disappear. You know, please, you know, try again, one of you two. And, uh, either this cycle or next cycle or something like that. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you for... Sean and then Tony. Associate member? No, we don't have an opening for that. I'm kind of looking to Rick because you know everything on that. The Board of okay. Selectmen does not appoint associate members to the Conservation Commission. It's the only commission in town that right. actually has the right to appoint their own members right. regardless of what the Board of Selectmen say on that, which is something that I would like to address in the future as an aside. Well, we'll does that happen? Here. Based on yes, what I've heard. It had. <laughs> you know, that was just my thought. I know there's only one <laughs> opening. Sarcasm. Yeah. 
Mr. Vignani. Just and then we'll, a we'll couple get you quick questions. Do you have any familiarity with the Wetlands Protection Act, or have you ever looked at any of that stuff or worked with that in the past? And I, I don't expect the, you to say I yes, read but the document. Yeah. But I've been I keep up with whatever it's in the newspaper about such a thing. From what I understand, it's like uh, things like. Um, Well, it's, it's very you've technical. Got, you, you, you know, you've got to watch out for the, the animals and make sure that the, the drainage is there and, and you're not, if they put something in a wetland, that it's not going to affect the wildlife in general. Right. Um, and things like building, um, you have the, um, and I'm not that familiar with all the little tents. No, I'm not quizzing you on it. I just didn't know if you had worked with it. So. Not specifically. Okay. Yeah. The, the other question I have, and this is, I'll ask to the other person as well. Do you have any projects that are going on that you're affiliated at all with that are under any sort of scrutiny by the committee or any potential conflicts of interest in terms of real estate property that you own or your neighborhood is doing blah, blah, blah? The only thing that I could think of that, that may have a conflict, and I would assume that I just you know wouldn't vote on it or whatever, if there is, I don't even know if there's voting, would be that um, track of land by Indian Trail. My property is on Indian Trail. And I'm, I don't think I'm in a butter because I have never gotten a notice. But that open land is very close to the property. But um, that's the only thing. Other than that, um, you know, I'm fairly new to town. I haven't been able to get my feet wet. <laughs> Great. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're going to be voting a little later on this evening. So um, you can stay. Otherwise, I'd say go home and watch us on TV if it makes it easier. Thank you very much. Moving on to our next uh, applicant. Uh, Mr. Kevin Tufts. Mr. Tufts, would you please come on up? You've kind of had the advantage of the preview of what we <laughs> asked this other lady. Uh, so um, if you could, uh, just for the audience and also TV, not to add more pressure on you here, but uh, why is it that you're interested in the conservation? Just kind of a softball to you. you know. I'm interested because I, I graduated with a degree from Unity College in Maine in conservation law enforcement. I've been back in town for almost a year now, and I plan on being here for quite a while. And I'd like to give back to the community. I was born and raised here, and I feel like, you know, between the rec department and uh, everything that the town's done for me, this is a unique way to give back to the town with uh, my background in, in conservation, so. Um. Questions, Joe? <laughs> Same question I asked uh, the other applicant as far as availability is concerned. Uh, I won't repeat the whole thing, but it is, yep. you know, important to be, not that you're going to be out in the field seven days a week, right. of course not, but there are certain projects that, uh, you know, the, our own conservation agent has just spread too thin. So you would have to be, you, period, you may not be, but periodically you might be asked to go look at a project, look at an audit condition, see if they're being upheld. Are you halfway available? Yeah, I'm available. Oh, yeah. I live here. I work here in town. I'm oh, okay. Very, yeah. very flexible. So uh, you know, I work odd jobs, handyman type stuff, and uh, I'd love to get out in the field. That's, okay. that's what I love to do. Thank so. you. Okay, Mr. What's, right. what, what's your work? What do you do? Uh, right, right now I'm, I work like odd jobs, construction type type deal, but just, just small stuff and uh, actually applied for the uh, assistant harbor master job, so we'll see how that goes. But. Okay. Um, I'll let you ask your question then later about that. The other question I had was, um, do you know some of the people? Have, have you spoken to people on the Conservation Commission or the current agent about what the responsibilities are, the former agent or anything? I've spoken with uh, Mr. Snow uh, <coughs> briefly and, uh, you know, just to talk to him, just a little background on the Conservation Committee and, and uh, you know, about my qualifications and, you know, whether he thought I was a good fit or, you know, if I should pursue something different yeah stuff like that okay and um, I take it then the travel question is is not an issue I mean sort of following up on mr. Norton's point correct yeah, yeah. okay um, and meeting every other week at night for several hours not a problem, no problem. Okay. Um, how do you feel about the balance of um, it's kind of an open-ended question and I don't mean for it to go on for a long time but What's your feeling about how you balance environmental protection versus individual property rights and, and so on, when sometimes they do come head to head? They do. Um, I believe, you know, in an overall picture, it's like you have conservation, you have 
things that you'd like to see last for a long time. You have, like, for example, if you have, uh, are you talking about like person like that want to uh, expand their property? And, yeah. You know, it's fine in a way to expand your own property as long as it's within the guidelines. I mean, there's there's streams out there that a lot of people don't even think about. They're so important as far as like vernal pools and and uh, smaller ecosystems that can be so greatly affected by you know someone just cutting down a few trees to make their their property bigger or you know putting in a bridge or you're just you know digging something up and uh, a lot of people overlook that but I, I believe it's really important and uh, you know there should be laws and uh, regulations set in place and uh, you know they should stay like that and uh, I don't know I, I believe good. you know oh, you got it that's fine yep thanks Tony yeah, just a, a couple did did you study the Wetland Protection Act in school? Uh, a little bit here and there. If it was in front of you, I could speak with you about it. No, no, and, and I'm not, I don't know it, so you can't ask me. <laughs> I just want to see if you have any familiarity with yes. it. Yes. Um, now, you just graduated <coughs> last year? Yes, in May. Right. And um, any conflicts in terms of where you live, in terms of any projects that are going on that you have some sort of interest in, your parents have some sort of interest in? No, um, no so it's good. Ever been to a meeting? A CONCOM no. meeting? No. Right there. It's actually one of the more exciting boards <laughs> that go on because just the potential conflicts that people have discussions about. Um, that's that's all I have. Mr. Tufts, thank you. Your yours was a little shorter than Ms. Carlberg, <laughs> so you're fortunate. But thank you again, we'll have a decision later on this evening, folks. Thank, thank you. you. And as as John and Rick both said, there's only one slot available. Is it a one-year term, Kim? What what is the? It's Right. So, so really, it's just a three-month. Yes. This is, so this is a three-month slot, and then you'll be up for re-election after that. Right. Assuming you both, yeah. assuming whoever gets it, after being exposed to it for three months, is still interested. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item number four. It's a discussion, a vote, the re-precincting -pre um, of the town and the town clerk, yes. <coughs> Bernice Brown. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. See, we have a very colorful map up here yes. to our right, demonstrating various wards and uh, what looks to be a new defining line for at least um, Ward 5. Yes, and this is simulated, and really the purpose of, of my being here tonight was to bring you up to date on where we are in terms of re-precincting. We, we really began the process a little more than a year ago in terms of providing information to the Secretary of State for them to begin their block information as they were waiting for the 2010 federal census information to come in, which finally came in two months ago. Um, what you see for a dark outline there is the um, borders as they currently exist. Then you see small swatches of color that have moved into one of the other colors. It is those few areas where the state has suggested in order to bring the numbers as close to even in each precinct as possible that there be changes made and that they, they have new borders to encompass those few changes. As I look at it, it looks like it probably would be approximately 500 households in all, maybe a little less than that, that would be changed. Um, their figures are based on the Donahue Institute figures from 2009. Um, those figures estimated that our population would be a little higher than it actually is. Um, having gone to the workshops where these maps have been developed, um, as I saw this one develop, it was my recommendation to the mappers when I talked with them that we might consider as a town, depending upon how the Board of Selectmen saw this, not to change our map if it were at all possible. Um, you can see the changes are very, very small. In some cases, they involve um, streets like some section of Beaver Dam. In other cases, you can see that the 
the spots that they're moving into are really not populated sections. And as you know, the precincts are based on inhabitants, not voters. Um, there would be probably a minor change, which would be fairly time consuming. I don't think a major expense. Um, this is what they're offering to us now as what they think the map would be. I talked with the mappers again today, and they said because of the difference in the population between the Donahue figures and the figures that in fact came in on the federal census, there is some chance that they can leave the map just as it is. They do have legalities that they have to fulfill in terms of the range of difference that there can be, but it looks like it's very close on our map. So basically, <clears throat> It's a deviation of about 500 households that are being shifted around from the various wards between one, two, four, six, and five. Mm -hmm. I guess so they're all being impacted slightly. Just slightly. And the question is whether we want to go with the new simulation that's been proposed here mm -hmm. or keep it the same because it's really a mm -hmm. de minimis type of change. Right. Mr. Norton. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I, a small change, though it might be, <coughs> I, I hear uh, Ms. Brown, it's a, it's a lot of work for a small change, a lot of confusion for a small change. It's one thing if there was a drastic shift in the population from one end of the town to the other that, that really made one precinct uh, unequal to the others, right. but that's not the case here. And, uh, I think my thought would be to leave it the same, I mean, if it's, it's if it's, you know, not broke, don't fix it. I mean, it's, it's uh, and it certainly isn't broke. It's working. Uh, so I'm, I'm, going, I'm leaning strongly in the, in, in the direction of, of leaving it the way it is. Well, the situation is right now that I would need to make your recommendation to the mappers yeah. that they, mm -hmm. if possible, leave it. Uh, the actual vote on the map would take place later when we have yeah. the real map that they have that, finally uh, my settled suggestion in on. Is, Good. is to suggest that we leave it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vignani. Um, two quick questions, Bernice. Um, so the goal of the mapping is to get the population in each <coughs> uh, ward or precinct the same. Correct. And what is the impact, the practical impact of that? I mean, it doesn't impact elections other than what line you stand in. It doesn't have a major practical implication except for those who are in a different representative district. Precinct 3 has a different so representative. The fact so Marshfield movement or in either direction around 3 does make a difference there. That's a good point. Um, it will not make a difference to, to situate for quite some time for us to increase the number of precincts. It's simply going to be a case of being in a different precinct. In order to accomplish that, though, there's a lot that has to be done in terms of notifying everyone who's been changed from one precinct to another, making all of those changes in the voter registration system, doing the legal redrawing of all of this. It all has to be drawn up in legal language as well as the visual that you'll see. It has to be done legally if, as well. If I can just, I, and I, I tend to agree with Joe, but just so people understand that the town, the town of Situate is split in, split into two different districts. North Situate is in a different district than the rest of Situate, with it, which is in the, I don't know the numbers, no. but but Jim Cantwell is, is the representative for one district, and, and Bradley is the other. So would the, is there a big swing in votes? You know, I, it doesn't affect our local politics, but do one of the two of them want more people to move? I, I think because this is inhabitants rather than voters, yeah. even if we change these households, we don't know if we're changing voters or not. These could be households with children um, who, who aren't voting yet. Right. They, they, they could be, when you look at it in some cases, it's, it's space. It's not really right. an assigned street because we have a lot of space in town that for whatever reason, conservation reasons, whatever, it doesn't have anything built on it. So um, right. I don't think in many cases that there will be a major change. Where we'll see a change, I think, is when we get further down the line in an <coughs> area we're not responsible for, but the legislature is, which is redistricting. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Murray. Life is short. Time is not cheap. Leave it as it is. Thank you. Same. Ditto.
Yeah. Well, well my recommendation can be to, right. if possible, leave it as Do you need a letter or anything? Do you need? No, I won't need one at this point. Okay. Um, if, if it gets into further discussion, maybe I might. Thank you, Bernice. Thank you so much. Moving on to agenda item five, a discussion vote, the location of the 4th of July celebration. Mr. Pavel, Mr. Litchfield, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. I know that you had emailed me and you're inquiring about uh, what you had discussed, I hate to say it, I think two months ago, maybe a month and a half ago, about the location of uh, the 4th of July um, um, speech and festivities. Celebration. Um, which last year was at the Common. Town Common. And you're looking to see if maybe this could be pr uh, presented and placed down at Cole Parkway, Parkway on the waterfront. If I may update you briefly <coughs> on uh, our successes and failures in getting the activities that we've asked for uh, because it's relevant to the decision. Uh, we are at this point extremely likely to have a 47 foot Coast Guard cutter in uh, the harbor tied to a floating dock. I don't know which one yet. I have to talk with Mark Patterson um, and open for tours. While it's not 110 feet as I was aspiring to, it will stay afloat, and uh, they found that preferable. Um, and while most of us have seen the 47s from the outside, very few of us have been inside, and they tell me it's pretty interesting with the rescue equipment and the engine rooms and so forth. Um, we will not have a fire boat to escort it into the harbor. We are still likely to have howitzers and uh, we are very likely to have a flyover, all of which will be centered in the harbor. And uh, we also will have the silent drill team. Uh, while we have not been successful in <coughs> getting free transportation from Virginia, the post has, the American Legion post has decided to fund uh, the airfare for the 20 people involved, 18 people, I'm sorry and uh, bring them up. Uh, we are still looking for some elements. We need a bus to get them from the airport down to uh, Mass Maritime where they'll be staying and then from there up to here and so forth. Um, and I'm still looking for a source of that. But it will be a, a celebration that is gonna be um, maritime in nature uh, in spite of General Casey's presence. Um, he's going to be there as an <coughs> honored guest and he may choose to speak, he may not. I don't think he's, even after his retirement, ready for someone to tell him what to do, so we'll, we'll follow his lead. Um, and therefore, I think it still makes a lot of sense for this to be in Cole Parkway. Questions for the board? Mr. Murray? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and, and Steve. <coughs> um, I think you guys are doing a really good job in, in coming up with the original ideas and also adapting them, you know, with and without the fire boat and stuff like that. And this does seem to be a maritime oriented affair. I would be interested at some point getting a review again of all the other things going on for the 375th. I know it's a long list and hopefully a growing list. Um, I have real strong concerns, as I've said before, about doing this at Cole Parkway on July 4th weekend. And I think this is a great um, example of why we need to really look at Cole Parkway in the context of some of the stuff that Mr. Danahy was talking about last week in terms of increasing the parking and the green space and everything there. But that is the busiest boating weekend of the year. Now, as you all know, I keep my boat there, but that's not why I'm talking because I get out of town on July 4th weekend or don't use my boat on July 4th weekend because the parking of Cole Parkway is 100% full. And it's a three-day weekend. It stretches to a four or five day weekend because of the way it is and people do their things. And these are people that are paying the residents who is 150 slips at Cole Parkway alone. And there's another 70 or 80 on the other side. And you know, the residents are paying $105 a foot and out of towners are paying 120 or something like that per foot. Plus the 600 boats out in the harbor who are using the parking and, and everything. It's just, a beehive of activity on that exact weekend. So we've got kind of a confluence of things. This is an excess of success. What you guys are doing is great. 
obviously, you know, the harbor is, is a great location. It's got great imagery. The Coast Guard 47-footer, you know, that all works. But I just can't support doing it, you know, in Cole Parkway on that weekend. There's the carnival that comes down there and displaces a lot of boats for a week, which I know isn't your concern, but just giving the broader context. There's heritage days on another weekend, which also is very disruptive. There's just a, a bunch of different things that everybody wants to use Cole Parkway, and at some point, you know, I think it hits to be full. I don't know what other options we have around the area. If we could do something at Pier 44, um, if we can, you know, that's not ideal for anybody, but, um, you know, maybe there's some way we could work on that. Uh, the, the boat yard across the way, that's also got restricted areas, and a lot of what I just said about Cole Parkway would apply there, but maybe there's some of the functions that we could do over there. I, I don't know if you've spoken to uh, Dick Eckhouse and Kreutzberg about, those, about the use of that particular building. Um, it's, you know, it's a beautiful building, as you guys know. Um, if there's things we can do with the, the church parking lot, um, maybe that would be a way of, if we could do that for overflow for the boaters. It, July 4th is a Monday, but it is the weekend and a lot of boaters come down and they, their cars are there for the weekend and that's obviously tough on the Sunday. So I'll be honest with you, I don't have an answer to this, but I do know that I'm very, very you know hesitant, borderline against doing it at Cole Parkway, but I usually, if I'm against something, I always try to come up with some some other alternative. And I'll be honest, I don't have another alternative here. One of, one of the problems is that uh, having a flat surface versus grass. I got yeah. I, yeah. Field team is well, like night here's and day. here's yeah. where I kind of I also just don't say um, it's a um, this is the 375th anniversary that only comes once in a lifetime or once period. Um, this is the first event, I'm assuming, because I don't think you have anything scheduled beforehand, to kick off along with a few other events. I think the town, and, and in particular if and, uh, boaters, f would have to tolerate for one day on a Monday, the 4th of July, parking, and if that means they have to find parking elsewhere or, or not being able to park, I know they'll probably be upset. You know, if I had a boat, I certainly might be upset if I couldn't get access to it. But with an event like this, I can't see how we could say no, because it is about the town. It's not about a special interest group. It's not about the carnival. It's about the town celebrating its heritage um, and kicking off with the 4th of July, uh, the, the birth of the country. I think, from my position... Birth of the town. Fourth of July is the birth of the oh, country. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. In conjunction with the history of the birth of the town, I think the boaters are going to have to, be, you know, accept that. I think some of those boaters probably will be on their boats watching the event, and might appreciate it. Um, so that's where I'm coming from, and I think, you know, with all due respect, the common is, is, is a beautiful common. The town does a great job. Last year was a phenomenal event. Mr. Litchfield, you built a wonderful stage. Still have it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful it is. We didn't have the ocean. I'd say let's put it right back at the common again. Mm. But this is a maritime town, and to put it an event like this in a common, I think, when you have the backdrop that the town has, would be a shame. And um, you're right. I did suggest that Cole Parkway should change and beautified and change in the future. But you know the. the the vista there is just gorgeous. So no matter how impervious the asphalt is, um, the backdrop is the beauty. And to have an event like this to kick off, I think we should. I, I think it would be a shame if we didn't. And um, you know, I, I, maybe the boaters will complain. I think people were complaining about irrigation systems last week because we restricted certain things. But I'm like, for one day, for a few hours, <coughs> I think we, you know, we should do it. That's kind of how, that's where I'm coming from. Just as a brief reply, let me just say, I, I agree with all his points. We just disagree on where we come down on this. Your points are all valid, and those are all very strong positives. Um, Mr. Norton? Just how much, how much space will the event take with the, the matching? How much approximately, what, what percentage, and this is strictly me a guess on your part, I know. Yeah. What percentage of Cole Parkway would be used for this event? 
I'm thinking about the same percentage that is used for the uh, KFC Carnival. That is from the water's edge back to the ends of the islands in the parking area, the, the end closest to the water. Yeah, thank you. John? In a time frame? Yeah. All day Saturday, all day Sunday, Monday? Or no, no, it's, it's only Monday. It's, uh, the event starts at 10, uh, so we've got to do setup. Mm -hmm. um, so say nine o'clock, and uh, it will be done at noon. I think, so I think Steve, a difficulty though is you've got to have the place empty. You can't have cars yeah, sitting there and it. towing them. We don't want to yeah. do that. So you need it empty from Saturday night. night. Well, yeah. Yeah. And then you but clear Sunday out night, Sunday well, night because fourth's on Monday. That oh, so Sunday, so Saturday night. So you Saturday need and Sunday. You know, we don't really care as long as the cars aren't there in our way. So Sunday night, Sunday night would be what you'd be looking right. for. And the difficulty would be if somebody goes off in their boat and leaves their car there, what do you do with their car? You know, we don't want to be the bad guys. Well, well there'll, there'll be good it. staging for like a chair to sit on top, you know? So you can <laughs> <laughs> we can do like I've a actually done that. Put the, put the, put the <laughs> place and put a chair out. Yeah, just a couple, the benefits, the benefits of doing it there, you never really stated with that. You, you mentioned the, um, it's the drill team, plus the Coast Guard is going to have their boat there. So right. it's all. Right. So it's really the boat. The v I mean, because when I think of when I was at, at the one last year, you know, when you have that nice common, a lot of people come and sit and they're comfortable there, where unfortunately at our bandstand, there's not a lot of places for people to sit. You're going to have a lot of people standing on That's the asphalt. That's why we can't have cars there. We need the space to, for people to watch. Yeah, and it's difficult to sit down on that asphalt. You know, it's just. Ideally, if know. we could get bleachers, it'd be awesome, but I don't know how we do that. Yeah. Uh, so are there any other extreme positives or negatives that we can think of of doing it there? I don't know if we've been clear on the benefit to the uh, silent drill team. No. Um, they don't issue any verbal orders during their whole routine. What you see is high precision, uh, the best of the best, uh, going through a close order drill. A big part of that is the sound effect of what they're doing, the slapping of the rifle, the stomping of the feet, <coughs> rifle butts on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And they gotta have something hard or you don't hear anything. Right. Uh, so you'd lose the whole audio portion, if you will, um, of the event, of their uh, performance. Right. We, we could take my stage and make three more and probably make it big enough, but that's a lot of work. Well, also the, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, if, you, if you're gonna get several hundred people down there, they're going to have to park as well. So you're going to have the boaters that are probably using up the available spaces. And I don't know where people are going to actually park that want to come to the event. Whereas obviously at the common, you have all the other side roads and stuff. Well, one of our thoughts was uh, T parking lot, it's holiday. So we just have to have transportation, right. which was something we'd have to fund or yeah. whatever. Or could well, you do it at the Lawson Tower? Could you do it at the Lighthouse? Could you do it, you know, some other place where there's... And to Mr. Murray's point, we could do it in the church parking lot because it's a Monday, not a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we can do it at Pier 44. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to have school buses running from the T parking lot. We can have them run from Pier 44 also. Mm -hmm. uh, to take well, you're talking about running. taking people to Cole Parkway. Yeah. yeah. I was talking about holding the event oh. at one of the other... Well, we, that, we could, we could do that. Because no, no, at the light, yeah. Yeah, if we're going to be trucking yeah. people around, we can do it anywhere. Right. Interesting. Logistically, the light, if, if I may, logistically, the lighthouse, tough. that's, it would be a tough yeah, one I was road thinking more of the yeah. view, yep. you know, and you can see great. the harbor. I agree. That would be, if it, that would be the, probably the perfect place to hold it as far as the historical value. But getting all those people in and what, it's just... You have um, to walk. Careful. <laughs> yeah. you got a man, how would you ever get emergency apparatus... Oh, yeah, I don't think that's. I think you'd have to close no the street. Clear, uh, have to walk. It'd be really of easy. the ones we've been batting around, I think Pier 44 would make the most sense in terms of it's hard top, it's nearby, it's got the harbor views. Not that the lighthouse doesn't, obviously. The other thing I'd be concerned about the lighthouse is that's a residential neighborhood, you know, so in tight turns with buses and things like that. Now, but last year you had chairs on the common. We, we had 200 chairs. We out. got those from the school department. Is that what you got, th you got those from? Yeah, them. we had to, um, I think we hired the custodians to move them up to the high school and then we trucked them all down in my trailer and set them up. And took Would them it be your intention to have chairs again? You have to. You have to, so you do pretty much the same thing. You'd we have work the same kind of deal we did last year. We found we could fit 
a lot of chairs in that trailer. On that. So the chairs would be primarily probably for the for the uh, festivities, the speakers, etc. Yes. Yeah. And the drill team would be off to the side somewhere for there, or somewhere in front of the stage. And we also have we didn't mention it. We're trying to have a band, which we could probably use the bandstand for that. Uh huh. Uh, if we didn't oh. do it in the Cole Parkway, we'd have to set something up for them as well. Yeah. Have you all spoken to? Ooh, I'm sorry, Mr. Murray. Have you all spoken to the harbor master about this? We have several times, but we need we need yep. to update them on the size of the boat and the fact that we can't use town yeah. pier. It's got to be on a floating dock. Yeah. Okay. Have you spoken to him about the use of Cole Parkway and potential impact on? Yes. That? Okay. His his opinion on that was similar to Mr. Dennehy's. So Mark agrees oh. with me. <laughs> Harbor well, Master agrees I with me there, Mr. Murray. I didn't tell him that that was your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> could we get a letter, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Mr. Could we get a recommendation from Mark? Because again, this is so so uh, uh, much intertwined with the boats and the boating season. You know, I'd like to get a, a letter from Mark stating what uh, he said because that would be important. Why don't Why don't we do this? Can you talk to Mark? We'll ask for a letter from Mark. Kind of get a definitive amount of parking spaces that you're looking at. Timing that you're looking to say, have it closed down, okay? Um, and that way we can take a look at that and pair it off, uh, you know, share that with Mark so that the ma uh, Harbor Master can determine whether that fits within his you know, concern. Yes, Tricia. Um, if I could suggest, um, this seems more like a special event, so I would suggest a they just complete a special event application that goes through the re regular review of all the public safety, DPW, like we normally do. It's never been done. The application's comprehensive, and that, er including the harbor master, has to weigh in on what the parameters are for it to be approved. Perfect. How about that? Right. Right, and well, then? There is one caveat. I have to respond to the Coast Guard on where the event is going to be this week, and Ooh. I can change it. But I got to tell them uh, a place, or I won't be able to get them to make the commitments on what's coming. Well, either wherever the event is held, the ship is going to go to the same place, right? Pretty much. Oh, sure. Yeah. Unless if, if we get down in Pier 44, we could but dock it down there. Right? Yeah, it's, right. It's almost so I don't understand entirely the point. a question for their flyover. They want to know where the uh, flyover will be targeting. Have to yeah. give a but as I say, I yeah. know they will accept a change. Sure. I just have to give them a place. Sure. I think why it's why don't we start with this then? Start with the common, because that's where it was last year. And then we, if there's going to be a change, which I hope there is, but if there's going to be a change, then we can say, guess what? We got a better location. Okay, and then better to set them up for expectation than for disappointment. And in the meantime, get an application put together. And we don't meet again for another at least two weeks, tops three weeks, but we can address this before the end of April. Okay. How does that sound, gentlemen? That's fine. One last thing you should do is you gave it to the board, and I'm not sure if um, you know people should see it. John, I know you can't probably zoom in on it with those great cameras you got back there, but there is a uh, the logo that a lot of people probably haven't seen, and it's a great logo. Matt Brown, I think, was the one who actually has done the work on it, and um, if if both the Mariner and the Globe can at least plaster it on your web pages and keep it there. I think it would be worth doing it. So this is the official logo for the 375th, right, gentlemen? Yes, it is. And yeah. don't give up the ship. This is the flag that's significant because? It's one on the back of my truck in the parade. That's why I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought they were going to say it came from Situate. I think that's what the push is. We're trying we try to take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they for sale or? Mr. Norton? Well, let's go ahead, Mr. Murray. That's yeah, yeah sorry. Are they for sale? I don't think they're for no. sale. The okay. committee's going to be passing those out to <coughs> like okay. stores and shops cool. and places Great. where they, you know, they get seen. That's excellent. Well, yeah, they should be, sh the uh, think about selling, society, uh, I think put the funds up for that. Think yeah. about selling flags. Don't give up the ship. I think you could make some money off that. Uh, Any event. Um, gentlemen, thank you. Then we'll, we'll, we'll see you back in the next two weeks or three weeks tops. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to uh, next agenda item, which is the discussion vote of the award contract of the Harbor Walk. Kevin Cafferty. Good evening. Funny, I was talking about the harbor, and uh, this is the harbor walk across the way, though, right? I, I didn't get a chance to speak up because it was postponed, but that 
um, the Haba Walk is on that side of Cole Park left to about the boat ramp where there'll be a sidewalk installed. Um, and there will be some parking that's taking in that area and some work that's going on. So just so this was voted on passed at the last annual town meeting a year ago? Yep. Okay. Yes, with uh, CPC funding. CPC, to CPC uh, funding. And so what we're doing now is we're going to be having a walkway that's going to be starting from Front Street going down to what's known as Lucia, uh, Lu, um, Lucian Russo's Landing. Mm -hmm and stopping there. You will lose some parking, but I thought it was being shifted back to Well, during the construction, we'll lose some parking. Um, but it's actually <coughs> there's going to be some rework of the riprap and a sidewalk built there. Um, and we'll clean up that edge in the sidewalk. You know, there won't be any loss to parking in the overall. But during the construction, it will be a loss. There's a question I was going to ask you in the last uh, agenda item. When's the construction proposed to start? This construction here for this project? Yeah. Um, July 3rd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> July 3rd? Um, let's hope not. <laughs> what, what will have to happen is the actual contracts with town council right now, um, I got word from Jim Toomey about three hours ago that he's ready for them and has accepted them. So we don't have the physical contracts back. As soon as you guys sign them all, um, we'll have a pre-construction meeting and we'll get the, uh, the performance bonds in the uh, payment bonds from the contractor will award the job and he'll start up right afterwards. So I'm figuring sometime, hopefully early May. And the prospective complete, uh, completion date? June. Um, it's gonna seem longer because there's three poles that have to be moved and we haven't had much luck with NSTAR on getting the poles moved so far. Um, but overall, uh, I think it's 90 days for a completion on this project, yeah. So it could impact any festivities that are but in yeah. Cole Parkway. Yes. So you're looking for a bid for, you want us to um, accept the lowest bid for this project? Yes, sir. And uh, the bids range from what, what do we have, Kevin, for this? Um, I don't have that. 199 to 330. Yeah, 199 to 330. I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me. What did we appropriate? Remember? I, I want to say it was 220 or 240. I know so I was thinking somewhere in that range. Right in that range, yeah. So we have a deal going, it looks like. We, we had some ad options um, on this project of, of some of the different things we could do with the, um, the fancy concrete, like the Marine Center. But we're, we're going to stay away from that because um, I don't think that'll hold up as well in the long term with the exposure to salt. So we're going to go more with a, a standard concrete sidewalk. Is that the same that's over at the Harbor Master? The, the yes. concrete? Yeah. John? I just had a thought, and I was talking to Al earlier, not about this contract, but the next one. But what would be the harm in three months, <coughs> in all likelihood, start May 1st? What would be the harm in waiting until September? I mean, like we were just talking about, there's so much that goes on, you know, from Memorial Day to Labor Day in the harbor area. What would be, you know, what, what are the downsides? I, I wouldn't have a downside with it at all. Um, you know, Mark's not here. He's kind of been the spearhead on, on getting this whole project going. He was interested. He had his reasons for getting it completed now as opposed to, as opposed to later on. So I, I wouldn't want to talk for him as, as far as time frame goes. I just, you know, I don't really know how big of a, you know, it's only 200,000, it's not that big of a job, but I mean, it's. The only, only issue at this point, we've already gone out to bid in, right. in I think by Master and Law, we have 30 days to award the contract or throw the, throw the contracts out. So we, we could have a problem if we let the contract expire and then put it out to rebid um, at a later date. All right. Did but the RFP, excuse me, did the RFP say that bidders must hold their birds firm for a period of 90 days? Generally, that's it's standard. It's 30 right? days and it wasn't an RFP, it was a uh, public bid. Okay. I just, how, mm -hmm. how much, how many, how many spaces are going to be impacted? I mean, it just, we see what's going on at Jericho and people are asking, starting to ask now, when's it going to be done? You have the commercial boat haulers that, you know, let's hope it's done next month because if it's not, you're going to hear about it. You know, I'll tell them to call you. <laughs> yeah, you should actually call them. I, I can answer that. I mean, they started on Jericho. They're all yeah, but that's not, I just, supposed I, to be May 1. I just don't want to have a have more of a problem. I mean, talking about 10 spaces, 15 spaces, you, the ones over there on the edge, right? The, on the edge, On yes. the the little cutout side. On the cutout side. Other side of South Coastal. Yes. Yeah. 
I think in terms of the construction of equipment, too, I mean, Sean brings up a good point. I, 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 you know, with the equipment, not so much the space is lost, but the equipment and everything, all the commotion, for lack of a better word, that will be going on around that project at the three busiest months of the year. Um, and, of course, we have to think about the contractor also. I mean, he may not be free in September. I don't know. It's, I but it seems like the worst possible time to be starting a project like this. That's all I'm saying. I do know that I did speak to Mark about this. I did not ask that question, and it sounds like an interesting question. I don't, I don't have any yeah. feeling one way or the other. I do know he was very happy to get this thing rolling and get it done, for sure. I think also this is the same contractor who's same actually contractor doing that's Jericho. Doing the state ramp. That's doing why the we state were able ramp. to get a pretty good price. So, you know, they're doing these two projects at the same time. That might be why there's a... You know, the next lowest bid is $40,000 $40, more, $35,000 yeah. more. So there might be some mobilization issues there. And you're saying it's about possible 90 day? I, I believe it's 90 days. So worst case scenario is it goes longer than that. They start in May. Not May. They're not going to start in May. June. They'd finish by the end of July into August. Probably somewhere in that time frame. And, and I'm hoping less on that. Um, and we will have an issue with the poles where we're going to have the sidewalk that looks completed and we're going to have three poles that are sticking in the middle of the sidewalk while we're waiting for National Grid to remove them and uh, move them over. And then the contract will come back in and do the uh, finish, do those last three panels of the sidewalk. Uh, I just hope we remember this when National Grid comes in looking for to, to move a pole, a uh, pole petition of one sort. You know, that, uh, they haven't been in in a long time. I know they haven't. I don't know. I think they might be more inclined to be more swift, given we had we had a great contact. Improve. We had a great contact with National Grid because they moved them for the driftway project, and they were very quick, you know, on on their terms of, mm. of getting everything moved. And um, <coughs> of course, every two or three years, they tra transfer people so they don't build up a good reputation. And we have somebody else who we've we've been trying to work with. Wow. Well, all right. So. Um, we need a vote on this. I mean, the, the obviously, I, I hear the concerns. I'm kind of like, I, I think, but if it means that we're going to lose a lot of money by doing it, um, on the good bright side of it, people are going to say that we're doing something down there. And granted, again, it's a problem for them to have to park, but then they might see the benefit of what's going on and be saying, I'm happy to indulge this for a while. But I will say, I'm trying to think it happens. Yeah. So you don't think there's any chance to get it over a different time frame? Can you? I assume you'll try. I, I think contractually we <coughs> could have a we could have a problem. Um, we could get hit with delay costs for it um, for doing it at, at a later portion of the, of the year. And I think the reason that we get the price we did is because they're doing a project simultaneously. They'll probably use the same superintendent, project manager to run both jobs at the same time. Any chance of getting it started with? very very quickly like in a couple of weeks um as as i said that's that's what we're hoping for actually we kind of fast tracked this because the bid came up and we begged borrowed and steal with kim to get it on this this agenda and we ran it off to uh, jim toomey as quick as we could to get everything signed we, were, we the goal was to have the contracts back tonight so that everybody could sign them and we could set up a meeting next week and get the guy started as soon as possible but um I just got the note from Jim that he just they just finished doing it, so the contract's on Quincy now. We'll have him back tomorrow. I'm going to move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the Citrus Harbor Rock contract number 11 HS-03 to Sequoia Construction, Inc. of Whitman, Massachusetts for a total bid price of $199,215 with payment to be made at the unit prices and or lump sum <coughs> prices pending receipt of a certificate of insurance, 100% performance, and 100% labor and materials bond. I'll second it. I just, I just wanted to mention it. Good yeah. point. Further discussion? <coughs> all right. Any questions from, from the audience? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. So maybe we should just make it kind of an internal policy that we don't do construction there in the summer. Is that if, if at all possible? Yeah, really, yeah, you know. you should have thought this went through a little ahead of time, but you know, the train left the station, so to speak. But, you know, when you're talking with these guys, I mean, they might be very motivated themselves to be doing it at the same time that they're doing um, Jericho. You know, I, I believe so that's the point. They so want to get know, a little encouragement with Yeah. Um, yeah, that will be great. Thanks. We haven't, we haven't met with them yet to obviously mm -hmm. we'll meet with them when we award the contract. Yeah, great. 
Kevin, we're moving on now to uh, agenda item seven, a discussion vote, change order, Musquashka Pond sewer project. What's going on here? If I can classify this, it's not, it's not really a change order. We had the original RFP that went out for the sewer work around Musquashka Pond, and that whole project goes out in phases. The original phase is to meet with the DEP, go over, see if we can build the uh, Musquashka Pond, and um, this is for the uh, remainder of the contract to finish with the engineering firm um, to complete the whole project. So this number is no different than it was originally, other than this is the second phase? It's actually the third phase. We were in here once before for an additional change order after we got the approval from the DEP. Um, and the contract's very specific on, on the areas of work that they're, they're doing. I believe you have a copy of it. What is this work? I was a little confused. Is this actual digging or is this more engineering? This is engineering. It's um, having a resident engineer out there. <coughs> um, it's broken down, I think, into <coughs> yeah, it kind of says everything. Quite a few phases. Bidding, construction phase, and DDP filing phase. Mr. Harris. If I'm not mistaken, it's the engineering for the construction and then the final DEP to sign off on. DEP sign off everything else, yes. Mr. Murray? Uh, the, the dollar value in your memo to us, Kevin, is different from the dollar value in the motion. And I want to make sure we're doing the right one. Your it's off 1,000? Um, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's off by 1,000. And I want to make sure... Is it 647 or, or is it 648? I'm going to go with the 648 <laughs> number. Okay. 648? It's, it's unit Whatever. prices. It's unit prices to, um, to take care of it. I, I'm, I'm fine. I just want to know what number. <laughs> it's $1,000 difference yeah, between 647,000, some change, and 648,000. It's a good point. This is not the same. a big worry. Same con same um, engineering firm that we used on, on the other cliffs oh, yeah. on doing this, and <laughs> it's the same follow-up, and they did the same procedure originally um, when Western Sampson was picked. Yeah, they're great. I, 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 okay, I want to make sure that they are doing great because I wasn't sure if they were the engineering firm. <laughs> I had some questions. I had questions about it in the past, but maybe not. Sean? No, I th I, that's what I just said to Joe. Will we have the same people on site that are familiar with our town yes, and so forth and f that are familiar with UNL? Great. Yeah, the Steve site engineer guy. Good. Yeah. I love the same resident engineer, and that's why we, we continue going with Western. Great. Yeah. Motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the Musquashka Pond Sewer Project Contract 11-SS-07 to Weston and Sampson of Peabody, Massachusetts for a total price of $648,629 with payment to be made at the unit prices. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. For the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Kevin, thank you. One more. But we have another discussion to have. A discussion vote agenda item number eight. Minot Beach parking lot, Bailey's Causeway. Kevin, it looks like you're trying to propose to put some asphalt uh, to elevate it by about three inches and maybe have um, remarking the, the parking lot to maybe maximize parking space. Right. This is, this is more informational. Um, and we, we have some plans up on the board there. We've got the existing conditions. Um, we were looking at improving the parking lots and we were looking at using the funds for the beach stickers in improvements to the different beach areas. And one of the areas that we came up that desperately needs improvements is um, the Bailey, off Bailey's Causeway, that first parking lot down at Minot Beach. So what we did is we went out and we surveyed it and we came up with a couple different configurations for parking and came up with the idea of running a drainage swale around the around the lot itself and raising the grade by about three inches with asphalt and um, try to get it a little bit out of the water and try to repair the parking lot in general. And this would be done with um, from the sticker sales. Mr. Chair, if I can just add, this is um, something I asked Al and Kevin to work on and bring before yeah. the board. Um, this is the first, I think, dividend that the change in the beach stickers um, is providing is that one of the things we wanted to do was not only be able to fund the beaches but start to make capital improvements to them. And when the beach sticker committee was formed, we had um, Officer Thompson did an extensive analysis of all the parking lots and what was needed. 
So this is the first one that's actually going to be able um, to use the beach sticker funds to um, start to improve the physical facilities around our beaches. Mr. Norton? And, and I think that answers the question uh, that I was going to ask. That's how it was determined that, that the minor parking lot would be would be the first one. And with an available fund. So yep. even though the revolving fund, we don't need a budget, we do a budget every fiscal year, and there's capitalization in there around 22000 for FY12, and um, this is about 29000 give or take, but we can adjust that. And just one other, Mr. Chairman. On the engineering, will we be doing that in-house, Kevin? I know we, 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 we planned. We did this in-house. This was all done in-house. All the engineering is done in-house. Is that the goal, I guess, going forward, to try to do more and more in-house? We'd love to. Um, if we can. Yeah, if we can, but, you know, um, I, I made a list of projects that, that we have ongoing on that, yeah. that we're going to be watching, and, and I've got like I have 16 projects ongoing with two guys and myself, and I've got six pending. So we're spread thin. They're, we're not doing any. We're going to be out in the field over over majority of that time. Um, John? Just just a comment, Kevin. This this is great. I love to see this sort of stuff happen. Thanks, Al, for make a lot of people happy. What will be the net gain if one of these proposals is proposals is? We're we're looking at it, and we had a couple ideas where we could come up with 32 spaces as opposed to 28. We could come up with 35. But one of the things we're going to have to do is meet with conservation, and one of the things we're looking to do is add some drainage there, and it's. We've lost a portion of that parking lot, which is which is right over here, where it's kind of caved in. <coughs> and we're going to approach conservation, see what they will allow us to do. I ideally, we'd like to rebuild this bank and kind of square off the corners and pave out to the existing edges and maybe run a new swale in here to handle the drainage. But um, it's going to be dependent on con conservation, what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. You'd You'd be happy with a crusher run, wouldn't you? Something that would, you know, other than asphalt, that would, would that be? Um, I'm afraid the crusher run wouldn't hold up there because right. that parking lot floods. All right, okay, and then it would wash away. All right, okay. It would okay. wash away. Um, right. So I was thinking of hot mix. And the other thing I'd, I'd love to be able to do is put crusher run in the larger parking lot on the other side um, and try to improve that parking Great. lot. And that's something I'll... I'll approach conservation about um, and see what we can do and what we can't do. Mr. Vignani. Yeah, a, a couple of things. Trish, did we get a copy of that budget for the uh, yeah, revolving it's in your budget book? It is. I have it. Actually, I can get it, Tom. No, actually, if you, I can get a copy of it maybe sometime next week. Or I think my book is destroyed. Um, the one thing Sean mentioned that is, is going to increase it from 28 to 35 spots, possibly. But if you look at the picture, 51 people get in there um, so as we improve it we're actually going to be and I would agree from this picture that probably at least four of these people are on the you know on the edge of really where they should be parking but as we improve it we're actually going to probably reduce the the usage because people really jam their cars in there pretty good right now um, you know the, the one problem that we have, which I think is a bigger problem, is the back lot because that floods completely. Um, so when this is gets full, this gets full even with the 51 cars, and then you go back there and, and you can't even get out of that back lot sometimes at high tide. So, um, so I'm wondering if the I'm not wondering. I know we have to do it, and I know it's the right thing to do. But I think what we're going to end up doing is is taking away spots as opposed to the point creating more spots because people are very creative with the use of the spots that or the space that's available right now there, just raise another question I have which is the beach sticker committee I mean we don't have a committee for the beaches um, I guess I'm directing that more towards Tricia we don't have a committee for beaches right just other beach sticker no, no right. it's just something that maybe we should have as a as an agenda item to talk about going forward because the first thing that came to my mind when I'm looking at this is saying, you know, what would the cost be to have somebody as a parking attendant? Now, it's a cost that's not going to be recouping unless somebody's going to pay to have to park there. But then you're like, if they can park it and squeeze cars in the right place as opposed to people who just come down and park 
you know, willy nilly and kind of park wide berths and everything else. Um, <laughs> possibly for the people of mine, they'd love that. Um, but I, I just think that's a, something for all the beach parking lots might be something to consider. Uh, cost well, wise. what times have changed? It was all the parking lots were named by uh, an attendant who, yeah. stood, who, who stayed by the front gate and made sure everyone had a sticker. And it was budgetary reasons I think it was done away with 20 years ago. Anyway, that's just a, the thought was to, if you're going to lose parking like that, maybe if somebody could be there to kind of designate where to park, you could maximize it. But well, right. we went we went off legally what you could do, and I and I have no doubt in in some of these we have one that we could <coughs> fit in 35 spaces. I have no doubt there'd probably be 48 people stuffed in there and people pinned in. But I, I know there's people pinned in there now on a regular basis. So oh. um, this is at least trying to clean it up and getting out of the water. Hmm. Mr. Murray. Kevin, why only three inches when you're when you going to that effort? I mean, I know you have to get up onto it, but I mean, I would think every inch that you can raise that thing is going to help you out. And then the only other comment I had is, if you're doing asphalt, are you thinking of a, a, a asphalt that water will pass through, sort of a, a porous asphalt? Because you know, obviously that's what conservation is, the, the biggest thing conservation is going to be interested in is on that, and you might want to be thinking about getting yes. one of those, yes <coughs> those no. types of things. Yeah. Um, we came up with three inches is is just an overlay is a standard overlay I, yep. I I mean we could put ten inches on that but um it's just a cost factor of okay. how much we could do I'd, I'd love yep. to raise that whole grade two feet yeah um yeah, and get exactly. it all out of the water and clean up the sides but I was trying to think of what the most minimal impact will be mm -hmm. because I think if we raised it too much the neighbors would be a little upset um just mm -hmm. talking to them when we're out there surveying it some of the neighbors came over, they were concerned if we raised it too much that it was gonna cause flooding in their yard as opposed to um, the parking lot yeah, sure. in, uh, in different issues. So we kind of came up with a happy medium on that. Um, and just cost-wise, because if you, if say we were gonna spend $35,000 to do this and we went to six inches, well now we'd be spending $70,000. I got you. So Fine. that's perfect. Are we, okay, thanks. Are we voting to approve this? Cause it, no, this is yeah. just informational. Yeah. We, I just want to explain what we had. Yeah, what it's we had it'd be interesting about. to me, I mean, again, I. I I like the dynamic of improving it, but I don't like the fact that we're tr the the out in the the outcome is going to be us hurting what we're trying to do, which is create more parking. So I don't know what if it's more prudent to do the back part first. That seems to be the. I mean, you guys go there too. I I'm I'm always noticing that the back part is flooded, as opposed to the front one. You know what it would take to get that one up, so at least the the people that can't park here can park there. A lot more money. Well, that's that's probably that's three or four times the size, and, and part of that might be, you know, where it's where it's wet. I don't know what we can raise and what we can't raise. Mm -hmm. I plan on going to the conservation commission. Um, I think in two weeks on a Monday night, and it was one of the things I was going to bring up is what we could do in that lot, if it would be possible. We have we when we regrind the roads, we get generated street grindings. Uh, I'd love to be able to put street grindings in some of that parking lot because it. It's just like at Widow's Block, the parking lot over there at the golf course. That's all grindings, and that kind of forms. It almost looks like a real parking lot. I'd love to be able to do something like that, that we have the material ourselves, we dump it, and we just come in, we pay somebody with a piece of equipment to grade it and try to um, make that work. But I, I just don't know what's allowable with conservation. I think this is doable, and we have the plans to present to them to show and get approval for it, but I don't know um, if that allows us to pave that whole parking lot. Good. Kevin, Thanks thank a you. Lot. Thanks a lot. Class. Appreciate it very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to agenda item number nine, a discussion vote for uh, FY 2012 budgets, town meeting article motions. Patricia, do we need to just go through all these or what are we doing here? Um, these no, are the motions that we're going to be making. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the board had everything that they needed or may need to request for Sunday night's town meeting. I have all the motions for you, and then I updated the background information that I had submitted uh, earlier on to reflect some recent changes. Uh, the one thing I will note that's changed even since your packet went out um, will be under Article 3, Mr. Dennehy, for free cash for snow removal. The motion that you're showing shows 147412 That new number, because of our little present last week is now 151,655 
and I do have a handout for the board um, that is for your packet for the town meeting. Um, yeah, with just some additional information that Al and I could share relative to Thank seawalls. You. Um, there's quite a bit of information here. I think because seawalls had a lot of discussion, not only in capital, but, but also because there are issues dealing with seawall, I think in three different articles between the special and the annual. Um, I wanted to give the board some background. I think there's been some questions, uh, valid questions raised about uh, appropriations for seawall and the, what is the town's financial plan. We just seem to be appropriating a lot of money and don't have a financial goal or uh, a long-term plan. So what I just gave you s sort of uh, seeks to address some of those questions if we should get them on the floor. And also, I'm sure most folks in addition to the board have seen the series of articles in the Globe the past uh, Sunday and Monday on seawalls. And what you might not be aware of, the, the Globe has zoned editions, and there's a separate seawall article in every single zone specifically written for um, those zoned editions. And um, it's, I think, something that has suddenly become very newsworthy in spite of the fact that we've been talking about it and doing a lot of town meeting with them now. There mm -hmm. seems to be a lot of more statewide attention about the issue of seawalls sea in general. So hopefully when folks come to town meeting, they can be informed about that as well. Okay, maybe, Mr. Chairman, I think the, our, our December storm uh, is probably the main reason why so much attention is not being paid to seawalls throughout the state. I think that brought home the fact that uh, seawalls can fail. And when they do fail, you have entire neighborhoods under eight feet of water. And I don't think that was ever pointed out as vividly as it was during uh, our, our, uh, our storm. So I think that had a lot to do with bringing this to an issue, to a head. And I think it's good because, I mean, it's, it's, something has to be done. I know you, you were in town today, and maybe you'll speak on that later, uh, at the State House discussing seawalls and the funding of them. It, this is an expensive thing that, that uh, someone has to address one way or the other. So uh, I just want to bring that up. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. All right. Just uh, about that Boston Globe article and so on, you know, I was quoted in it as were other people here. It is one of the better articles I've ever come across in terms of getting the science right and the sort of the policy aspects of it accurately reported. And as I was saying to a lot of people, the estimates of sea level rise in terms of the rate keep getting faster. As the scientists learn more and more about this, the numbers never seem to go down. No one ever says the rate of sea level rise is going slower. And so these, these problems are going to get continually worse and worse um, as things move forward. So uh, I'm pleased to see this backup material on the seawalls. The other question I had was just very practical. I obviously, I, I read through this. Are we going to get this backup material again later, or do I need to keep this? I got to keep this exact one. Okay. Seeing you again between now. Okay. <laughs> we'll. Okay. We'll have it again. All right. Great. Thank you. Just didn't know which paper I needed to carry with me. And which I, right. I just you. I want to pause on that. We're meeting tomorrow to discuss that very issue, so you may or may not be getting okay. it again. Okay. Got it. Um, in terms of the seawalls, did, did we ever get an inventory of public versus private? I know that we were. Um, because there's that whole discussion on on repair work on public and private that is is going around. <coughs> um, and I think there's a very telling sentence right here that Al wrote, you know, that seawalls on private property protect public infrastructure, just as seawalls on public lands protect private property. So it's really a... And if I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, you could have a stretch of wall where the middle section is privately owned and the outer sections are publicly owned. And, you know, I, I, in your letter, which you talked today, how you're trying to get federal money, state money, um, private property owners' money, and town money to work together to repair the system. Right. I think um, there's no question it's a shared cost. It's the issue of determining primary, secondary, and tertiary responsibility. Yeah, what I did pick up today is. Um, from DCR is the statewide inventory. I was only able to get one copy of the, the analysis that they did. This is only state and locally owned seawalls. It does not, to your point, include any privately owned seawalls. So right now, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't really have a policy in repairing seawalls 
on publicly or privately owned land. We're trying to figure out what the best way to to that, deal with that issue. That is that we, it, we know what the, um, the the need is, what what it takes to repair them, but in terms of this board adopting a policy is how do we go about it. No, that's where we're sort of at right now, the point in time. And that was a lot of the discussions that you had exactly today. What. So people that are out there wondering who's going to pay for what, it hasn't really been determined, and we're looking for all sorts of funding that we can get to do it, but knowing that it is it is a complex joint problem, it, it'd be difficult to go to a wall and fix a middle component and not fix the other ends without that money just being wasted. Um, one other point that I think Joe or John brought up is the, the seawall that breached was actually ranked as a good wall. It didn't hit, you know, there's a grading system for the walls. I don't know if it goes one to six or six to one, but yeah. Yeah. so that was ranked as a strong wall that breached in that storm. And Joe sent us some unbelievable photos yeah. today of what, what happened down in that area. Um, and I see the fire chief back there. Really unbelievable photos of your staff putting out the fires with water up to their shoulders. Um, it really is a telling picture. In fact, we should get some of those for the, for the paper. Um, but I think that um, the point is that if it had hit a weaker wall, it would have been even more uh, devastating. So um, I don't know what the conclusion is, but I don't think we have an answer in terms of we're not going to fix that part, but we're going to fix that part because it, it is a joint problem that is being discussed. But along those lines, that book is at least the state's perspective on what is public yes. seawalls. Yes. So if a seawall is not in there, at least from the state's perspective, it's private. Notwithstanding your your points, which are, are valid, but in terms of public versus private by one measure. Yeah. I guess my if point- If it's in that book, it's public. And if it's not in that book, as a first order, first pass, complete, yeah, public can affect private and private can affect public. But in terms of like, public private it's in that book or not right. I guess my whole point there was there's not we haven't made a decision as a board as to whether we're fixing or not fixing any type of wall yet we're trying to get to the bottom of that so so people that are worried about public funds going to private walls that's not the case yet we don't we don't know the end game is that correct right and the hearing today was on a series of bills relative to coastal management <coughs> and seawall and one of those bills has tried to address a 1939 opinion from the Attorney General's office as to that very issue is, you know, when do you spend money on seawalls and what are the property rights and things like that. So um, three three or four different bills relating to seawalls. 1939? 1939. Interesting. Um, all right. Um, any other questions? This. Well, that takes care of it. Agenda item, uh, agenda item number nine. Um, moving on to agenda item number ten, accept a resignation of the Conservation Commission. Move the Board of Select and vote to accept the resignation of Joseph Urbanski from the Conservation Commission and further the Board thank Mr. Urbanski for his years of service to the Commission and the town. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Vignani. Discussion? Um, just want to say thanks to, to Joe. Did a wonderful job and uh, wish him well. Um, he did. All in did favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, moving on to the appointments, number 11. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may, as the liaison, uh, I didn't meet, I didn't know any of these people ahead of time. I was honestly impressed with both of them. And um, I'm going to nominate Kevin Tufts, given his sort of forestry experience and uh, some, of the, some of the aspects that he talked about. Um, but I do want to just say that I didn't, this, this is, you know, 50.5 one way, 49.5 the other. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to move the Board of Selectmen appoint Kevin Tufts to the Conservation Commission. Okay. So, oh. Second. Second, Mr. Harris. Discussion? I thought they were both very good. Yep. And I hope Maureen, you know, chooses to get involved in a, in a different committee um, in the future. All in favor? She passes. Aye. 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 Unanimous. And Kim, since we do have this round of other appointments coming up, I mean, can we really flag her name and maybe reach out to her? And I guess this is the sense of the board, but you know, 
really encourage her to apply again for, I mean, there might be a slot on the Conservation <coughs> Commission, I don't know off the top of my head, in three months, um, or some of the other boards. Uh, she seemed to be very valuable and, uh, you know, professional and business, and she's got, she could go in a lot of different ways, and we certainly don't want to turn down really qualified people like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kim. How about the next appointment, gentlemen? Read your motion. Motion. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you, can somebody move that the uh, point Eric Penner? Sure, I've got to hold through the system. I thought Joe was going to this is Joe's. This is this is Joe's. Oh, Joe, yeah. okay. I did it. Yep. yep. Okay. Second by who? Me. Mr. Harris. A further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Eric, congratulations and thank you. Souci en brie. Uh, moving on to other business. I'll start. I don't have any other than come to town meeting on uh, Monday night. There you go. Who's next? Mr. Murray. Yeah, um, I just wanted to announce uh, all this discussion about beach stickers. Beach stickers are now on sale, and they're going to be effective uh, April 1st. And so come on down early. Uh, order online even if you can to avoid the rush, but come on down. The beach Transfer stickers. State. Transfer to. Both. Transfer stations, too. Is that right? I think, yes. Kim says yes. So. Yeah. All right. So beach stickers and transfer stations. Come and get them. Come and get them in person. Come and get them online. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. We're selling uh, at the town hall at 10 hours of the last year. Tuesday evenings from um, 4 to 7. Tuesday evenings 4 to 7. Yeah. And Thursday mornings from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Thursday 9 to 12. And as you said, available online. Download forms with the mail-in program. It's awesome there we go. Thank you, folks, for the... I, help on that. If I may business. just follow up with Mr. Murray, I think that's, you know, noticing the, 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 the lines that were there last year come July 1st or the first week, the last week of June, first week of July, I think starting early, giving people a, an extra two or three months will certainly uh, alleviate that situation, hopefully, especially if the newspapers pick it up and, and, and let people uh, be aware that they can come up now and buy the stickers. I think that's great. One other other business that's a purely personal thing. This morning I was at Jenkins School for the kindergarten orientation <laughs> of, they did a great job down there. The kindergarten <coughs> orientation of my last kid, f the fourth kid. And uh, I remember that the first day, first kid's Christmas or kindergarten orientation was done on the day that my fourth kid was born. And it was a selectman's meeting and Sean, you were chair. And after I had, doing other business, you said, Mr. Murray, do you have any other business? And I was so tired after having witnessed the birth of my fourth kid, gone to the kin kindergarten orientation of my first kid, I completely forgot. And I said, what are you talking about, Sean? You said, didn't your wife just have a baby today? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I forgot about that. So anyways, uh, I did just want to do, expen extend my congratulations. There's a lot of discussion about schools and so on and so forth these days, obviously. but. Jenkins kindergarten orientation. All the staff there did a great job, and uh, my, I take my hat off to them all. Cool. That's it for me. Thank you, Rick. Tony? Yeah, uh, just a, a quick notice that the crews from NPRO will be at Egypt, Hummerock, Sand Hills, and the Spit tomorrow, April 6th, cleaning up the sewage disk from the Hooksit, uh, Hooksit New Hampshire treatment plant. Should additional, should additional information be required, please contact the Board of Health Office at Five four five eight seven two five. And also, just to reiterate what John said. There's a lot of important articles on the uh, town <coughs> meeting. It starts at seven o'clock. We've got a, our budget. We've got our capital plan. We've got bylaws. We've got uh, potential override. So it's important to be involved. So show up if you can. Thank you. That's Monday, seven o'clock. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I've been you know, watching over the years the. Uh, the wastewater treatment plants <coughs> growing average on the amount of, of, of sewage is treated and, and issuing a, a warning over the years that it continues to climb up towards our, towards our limit. But for some reason, which certainly uh, I certainly can't explain, but for the past four or five months it's just gone in the other direction. Instead of more sewage being treated, getting us closer to our, to, to our limit, whether it's the uh, inflow, I, I have no idea what's causing it, 
but it's dropped down by hundreds of thousands of gallons a, a day over a 12 a 12 month rolling average which is remarkable and uh, if Al was here I'd ask him what he attributes it to it if he knows but it certainly gives us a lot more uh, flexibility in that in that area so let's hope it keeps going down that's all I have mr. Harris just a couple of quick things this was um, dropped off this is uh, just a little blurb and I think we heard it weeks ago about the uh, feasibility study from for Pier 44 and I'd just like to make an announcement that the um, committee will conduct an open public forum on Saturday April 30th in the high school auditorium from 1 in the afternoon to 4 p.m. and the you know everyone's encouraged to attend the committee's going to present their preliminary findings to the public for the reuse of Pier 44 in the property located at 44 Jericho Road and for more information, you can visit the committee's website, which is on the town's website. Um, you, everyone knows it. And the committee can also be contacted through their webpage. That's it. But, but, uh, just, just to make sure people understand, they're not going to be announcing a decision as to what Pier 44 is going to be. Not it's giving an update. Right. Not, until, not until they come before us, yeah. is my understanding. Yeah, I spoke with Ed to clarify that. I just want to make sure people out there understand that. And just one other little bit of good right news ahead. there. Uh, this is from Jennifer Vitelli, uh, rec director, and I don't know if it's public knowledge. Well, it must be. I don't know if Tricia knows about it yet. They received a $5,000 donation for their sailing program. And I just want to thank uh, Mr. Great. Norton for that. What program? <laughs> the sailing program. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just thought that was good news. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> well, that brings, us, <laughs> that brings us to uh, the final agenda item, which is adjournment, folks. Move to um, adjourn the meeting at 8.29 p.m. Second. Second by Mr. Vignati. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Look forward <laughs> yeah. to seeing you next Monday at town meeting. <laughs> Good night. Are you guys